And Phyllis, you should have control of the screen. Okay. I believe. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Phyllis Bush, and Anthony asked me to give a little bit of background about our group, Northeast Indiana Friends of Public Education, how we got started, how we became activists, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to try to give you a little bit of background uh, about us and tell you what's new in Indiana and what we can look forward to in the uh, upcoming conference. Um, let's see, now I just lost my picture. Hang on. Okay, I always wanted to start out with, with it was a dark and stormy night as a way to start my story, uh, but that really has nothing to do with anything that we did. Uh, back in 2010, here in, in Indiana, and well, actually, probably back in 2008, is when we started, uh, when education started getting really to take all the hits that it did. And uh, it started here with the, the financial crisis in 08, and then it followed up in 2010 with, um, with the right to work. And right to work caused all kinds of troubles. And, and that is when we first started seeing in Indiana all of the uh, rather dubious education laws that started coming through. And several of us were very concerned about it. We went to a town hall meeting, and that was where I had my first Norma Ray moment. And my Norma Ray moment was I was listening to uh, – this young guy from the Department of Education, whose name was Dale Chu, and he was supposed to be giving all the stuff about uh, right about uh, Teach for America, about charters, about vouchers, and and what have you. And he just kept talking. And there was a our our local representative was there, and she was on the Education Committee, and she knew very little. And so Dale just kept adding in all this stuff and giving a lot of non-answers. And I was very frustrated by the fact, the lack of respect that this guy from the DOE, who, was, who worked directly for Tony Bennett, uh, that he was showing the, the teachers in the room. And so I had my first Norma Ray moment where I told him he needed to show more respect for the people that were in the room. Uh, shortly thereafter, several of us from Fort Wayne went out, uh, heard that there was a Save Our Schools conference in D.C. And we, so several of us went out there and then we realized that maybe we weren't crazy after all, that things, bad things were happening. At that time, what, we had just met Anthony uh, shortly before then, and he was coming out to Fort Wayne for a uh, in-service, uh, project-based learning in-service with Fort Wayne Community Schools. So we invited him over to meet a bunch of our friends. And when he came over, we decided we wanted to do something more than just have a, one protest and be done. So that was when we formed uh, Northeast Indiana Friends of Public Education. It, now, it looks like we had it all together then. We did not. We kind of were flying by the seat of our pants most of the time. But if you want to find any of our information, uh, the website at the top, www.knifepea.org, will take you to all of our, our material. And in it, we have, on the left-hand side, you have all of the editorials and op-eds and things that we have written. On the right side, we have... Uh, we have all kinds of of, um, of hints and about how to write letters to the editor and and so on and and you, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you follow the tabs, you can follow what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, at any rate, so uh, so we got started. We really didn't know where we were going to go or what we were going to do. But our first goal, our first goal. Uh, was to get a new uh, superintendent of public instruction because Tony Bennett, uh, many of you have heard of Tony Bennett, was uh, he was right at the top of the of the privatization movement along with Mitch Daniels and Jeb Bush, 
And so our main, our first main goal back in 2011, 2012, was to get a new superintendent of public instruction elected. And so we joined with a lot of the groups around Indiana and we were kind of a raggedy bunch of people. There were some people in Bloomington, some people in Indianapolis, some people up in, in the Gary area, all over the state. And we were all working together to try to get this unknown teacher librarian elected because uh, we thought that that would mean everything would change. Well, much to our surprise, she, Glenda came up out of the woodwork and she managed to defeat uh, Tony Bennett and we thought, well, heck, we're done. This, um, uh, uh, Glenda Ritz managed to win and so we thought, well, everything's going to be good. We didn't know that was the beginning of, of, the, of things getting worse because she was the lone Democrat in a whole super majority. And unfortunately, we have spent the last time since 2012 uh, trying to trying to get our state legislators to listen. Um, and this was before Pence became governor. We had uh, Mitch Daniels was governor up until 2012, and then Pence became governor, and he made an all-out effort to do everything he could to undercut. Uh, Glenda Ritz at every step of the way. So <laughs> that's that background. as we go along, um, one of the things that I put here next is, and this is probably out of order, but I put it in just so I remember to say something. One of the things that we've realized since we started this whole odyssey back in 2012 is that we kind of been flying by the seat of our pants. We start as soon as we finish one goal, we go to the next, and then we try to decide what's the next thing that needs to be done. Well, after having done this for a few years, we realized we were kind of, we were accomplishing a lot more than we realized that we had. So every year in December, early January, we do our knife per year in review, where we go through and we put do a summary of everything that we have done. And sometimes we're kind of amazed that we've accomplished as much as we have. And, and, and I would recommend for any of you who have your own grassroots groups, <laughs> it's a good way to keep track of what you're doing and also to see that you've made a lot more progress than you thought you had. Okay, during those first years, we have worked with anybody that, anybody that has a pulse. Back in 2014, uh, we worked with uh, the Moral Mondays folks. They came to Indianapolis and we worked with them for a while. In 2016, uh, we uh, took part in an ALEC protest down in, in, because ALEC had its national convention in Indianapolis and we felt, it, and, and of course, we, we chose the hottest day of the summer to go down and protest. Uh, to, and and uh, so that was kind of cool to see all these people from different groups. There were labor groups, there were teacher groups, there were uh, who knows what, what all, but there were people from all over the state protesting about that. Then one other thing that we have done is we have met with, we have met with other 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 groups uh, every year in, in um, the winter, usually around I, I think it's uh, on that on President's Day, we have a rally at the State House where there are all the different teachers groups come around and they rally together and they write letters and they talk to their representatives. Uh, the, the moving right along, among other things that we've done is we have tried to make it to as many, uh, most of our group and most, a lot of the activists here in Indiana have gone to all of the conferences. The first one having been in Austin, the second in Chicago, the third in Raleigh, and last year's was in Oakland. And this coming one in, uh, next month will be in Indianapolis, which we are thrilled about. We've also participated in national days of of action uh, and try to try to do as many things as we can to work with other people in and around uh, the state and in and around our town. One of the things that we're proudest of having done this last year is we've been working with local pastors through the uh, 
uh, along with Charlie Johnson and the Pastors for Texas Kids. Uh, uh, we did one, one uh, live stream with Charlie, and then he came up and, and had one get together with us. And we worked with parents, teachers, uh, and uh, pastors trying to get a group. We're still trying to get some pastors involved, but so many of them with all the social issues going on right now have so many issues that it's hard to keep them. It's, it's hard to pull them in. We're doing our best that we can. Uh, among the other things that we are doing or that we did in this past year is we partnered with with ISTA, which is Indiana State uh, Teachers Association, to show backpack full of cash. And we had uh, they uh, the Indiana State Teachers Association PAC uh, helped us. They did most of the legwork and we did most of the people work to, to get people to come. And it was a really successful event. Uh, then this meet up, greet up, tweet up, we did in April because our legislature, as is wont to do, has a tendency to do things under the cloak of, of night. And they had a very nefarious bill, which was a takeover of the Muncie and Gary School Corporations. And they didn't get it finished during the regular session. So they had a special session. Well, since we, are not particularly trustful of any of these people and what their their goals are. We hosted a meet up, greet up, tweet up where we got parents, teachers, uh, people from the teachers union, and so on, to meet up for a whole week prior to the the legislative the special session. To write letters, write cards, to tweet to our our representatives. Uh, to call, to do whatever we could to get to make people aware of HB 1315 and, and what were the possibilities of, of, of what was the precedent it was going to set if it passed. And much, much to our dismay, it did, uh, it did pass as we kind of figured it would. Uh, and, and when it did pass, uh, we figured that it would have lots of, of um, I don't know what the word is, that, that the consequences would not be good. And, they, and so far from what we're reading, it looks as though the city of Muncie does not have any local control that it's going to be taken over by Ball State and, uh, and so on. So that brings you up to date on where we are. And now I'd just like to take a couple of minutes to talk about some of the issues facing Indiana. And they're probably going to be facing, uh, facing other Midwestern areas and, or other, other, uh, other districts throughout the country because it seems pretty typical. Our, our state legislature has, uh, they have been pushing one thing after another as far as uh, like education policies, which have not been particularly good for children or other living things. But from what we have found this year is the push that they're planning on doing is they're going to push for workforce development and in that, uh, they have kind of figured out that they're on the losing the battle to control education, so they're moving the game elsewhere. Uh, our governor, Holcomb, has created a new high-level position to promote workforce development, and we will probably see a growing portion of our state budget steered in that direction. And another thing that's probably going to happen is we're going to see uh, a push toward force consolidation. For those of you who don't have rural schools in your area. Uh, for rural schools, when they consolidate, like if you take little school X and little school Y that are out in the country and you consolidate them, uh, put them together, it sounds good on paper, but what you've done is you have lost a community and these people are losing their communities at, uh, as they consolidate the schools. The second thing on the list is that school takeover issue is real and it's coming our way. The Muncie and Gary takeovers show that they no longer, that our state legislature no longer has reservations about stripping local control from schools. And without public awareness, 
more schools will probably fall under their control. And this is one, one of the fears that I have locally here is when parents and teachers get upset about a particular thing that a school district is doing, uh, I get kind of upset about the fact of making it a, a public thing because that just feeds more fodder into their uh, into the state's uh, idea of takeovers. Well, if, if Fort Wayne Community Schools can't get it done, then the state will have to do it. So we need to be, and I'm not saying that we need to be too cautious, but we need to be, at least from my point of view, we need to take care that when we are bad mouthing something, that we're not cutting off our nose to spite our face. Another thing that's coming is uh, more virtual charters and vouchers. And uh, apparently, there's going to be a push for equitable funding, which we would hope for. But um, I have not seen a whole lot of, of I have not seen a whole lot of evidence in in, in equitability. Then the next thing is the IPS model. That's Indianapolis Public Schools. That is a model for, uh, a not so good model for school takeovers. Uh, back a few years ago, uh, they hired Superintendent Lewis Farabee to come in and his main goal was to pretty much sell off Indianapolis public schools to the highest bidders and they have sold them off to to charter um, if you look in the state of Indiana the three largest school districts are uh, Fort Wayne Community Schools is number one Indianapolis public schools is number two Indianapolis charter schools is number three so they've been very successful in the charter takeover um, and Let's see, uh, and then the last thing, and this is probably all over too, is the teacher, is the uh, teacher shortage and teacher compensation and so on. Those are going to be issues. And uh, the one thing too is that the teacher shortage is, as we all know, is very real, but our legislators' refusal to acknowledge uh, their part in causing it is uh, symptomatic of the fact that they don't take responsibility for having caused most of the problems that are here now. If there's anybody from Indianapolis or that can speak to online now that can speak to uh, about what's going on IPS, that would be good. They could probably fill in some of the blanks that I have left out. IPS currently has a group that's fighting back. It's called Indianapolis um, Community IPS Community Coalition, and it's a group of of uh, college folk, uh, ISTA folks, uh, teachers, parent engagement people that are working to try to try to take back IPS from the clutches of of the privatizers. And I think that brings you up to date, Anthony. Great. Thank you, Phyllis. And of course, a lot of these things will be discussed in much more uh, detail in Indianapolis next month at our conference. And we wanted to sort of give a little preview of the upcoming conference um, because we're getting excited about it. We wanted to share a little bit about what's going to be happening. Um, and I know, I believe Carol, Carol um, Burris is on the line as well to help us talk a little bit about what's going on. If you, if you haven't registered yet, there's still, uh, there's still some room available for folks to come and attend. Um, and um, I sort of went back, this is actually from our very first conference in Austin, um, just to give you a feel for what these conferences are like. We have panels with, with student activists, with community activists, um, there's there's uh, G2 Brown who's who's now on our board. Um, there's just some of the crowd and uh, some of the excitement of just seeing one another. A lot of us have only met online or in venues like this, and so it's a great chance for us to get to meet meet some of our some of our heroes, some of our comrades and colleagues in this uh, in this journey. And um, 
This is, uh, there's Helen Gim, who's going to be one of the keynotes at, um, at our conference in Indianapolis. And actually, here are some of the other keynotes. Um, Diane Ravitch, of course. Uh, D Derek Johnson, who's the, the head of the NAACP, which has been uh, taking some very brave and significant stands uh, related to charter schools. Um, Posse Salberg, who was in charge of education for the country of Finland and has done some great work uh, advocating for sort of holistic education practices um, and also educating us about the international aspects of education reform, what he calls GERM, the global education reform movement. Um, also, Jesse Hagopian, who's from Seattle um, and has just released a book um, called Black Lives Matters at School. Um, he's done some really excellent work, um, both in resisting high-stakes testing and more recently in highlighting uh, ethnic studies, the impact of standardized testing, particularly on African-American students, um, and the need for, uh, for curriculum that really reflects a value of black lives and lives of people of color. Um, and Helen Gim, who was a parent activist in Philadelphia and has, uh, was elected a couple of years ago to the city council in Philadelphia and has been a really great advocate. Um, Carol, do you want to, we also have, I, I just chose some of the workshops to highlight to just give you a taste of, there's going to be something like 35 or 40 different workshops. Um, these are some of the ones that uh, that might be of interest. Carol, you want to talk a little bit about the conference? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, there are 43 workshops this year, which is our highest number ever. And one of the things that I think is really terrific is that we have a lot of in the field grassroots superstars that are joining us, some from the Indianapolis area, uh, but then also from places like Kentucky, where SOS Kentucky wage, has been waging a mighty battle against charter schools and um, making a difference in that state and slowing them down. Um, we also have the heroes from Arizona, from SOS, and they've uh, really pushed back on, um, on vouchers. So it's a real opportunity to learn what others are doing in their states because so much of this battle is really a state by state battle. Uh, we're also, we've also carved out some interesting time this year um, where people from big cities, from small cities, from rural areas, from suburbs, each will have a space that they can go to because we find that geography um, probably defines our problems. Um, more than anything else, that rural schools, whether they be in the Northeast or in the Southwest, have more in common sometimes than the big city schools in their own um, in their own states. So we're trying that idea as well. It's going to be a fabulous conference. Um, we still have a decent amount of tickets left. Um, we can offer some scholarships in terms of the purchase of those tickets. Please, 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 if you haven't registered, register. And if you have registered, find two friends to bring along. It's, uh, it's really going to be a very exciting two days. Thank you, Carol. Well, um, I wanted to, to save some time um, to just open it up for uh, discussion and questions or commentary. So anybody who's in attendance, um, if you have any questions for um, Carol or Phyllis, um, you're welcome to to chime in and uh, and speak up. Um, so the floor is open. Does anybody have any questions or comments? And please be brave. <laughs> and unmute yourself if you're trying to talk. There, I just unmuted it. Oops. I'm, I'm muted. I'm trying to unmute everyone. Um, this is Marion. 
Um, I was wondering, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question about when the, um, if we would be able to see the sequence of workshops and how they're scheduled, if we'd be able to see the actual schedule of all the workshops before we go to Indianapolis. Absolutely, Mary. And um, we have that schedule finished. Um, just having Colleen uh, take a final look at it. And the hope is we're going to be putting it up next week. So I would think Great. That, okay. that, yeah, by the end of the month, yeah, this year, I, I feel like that's something very important that we do get that schedule up early so you can start mapping okay. out where you want to go. Okay. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other uh, questions or or comments. Here's a f again a few of the workshops that that this is just a sampling. This is like twenty percent of the of the total. Charlie is coming up from Texas, and you just missed that one. Yeah, Char Charlie Charles Foster Johnson is coming up. Uh, Mercedes Schneider will be talking about the research um, that went into the report that. NPE just issued on uh, on all the billionaires' money coming in uh, coming into education um, to influence school board and, and state legislative races. Peter uh, Green will be there too. Peter Green is coming. I've just been trying to work on Stephen Singer to see if he will come. Um, Denisha Jones will be there. A bunch, there's a bunch of stuff about early childhood education as well as trauma, the impact of trauma. Um, thing that's not on the workshops that uh, I find uh, that I really enjoy are the, the get togethers that we have after the panel discussions where we can get together and just brainstorm and network with other people, people that you've just <clears> seen <throat> online or that you've written emails to, because you can find uh, that there are a lot of people that are having the same, that are, that are dealing with the same things that you are dealing with, and it's nice to know that you're not crazy. <laughs> yeah, and we will be doing a movie night as well on Friday night, sort of a pre pre-conference event. So if you can get there early enough for that, that would be great. We'll be showing highlights from three or four recent films that are highlighting the issues. Um, Backpack Full of Cash will be one of them. Um, one called Paper Tigers related to trauma-informed education. Um, and another one called Teacher of the Year that uh, that we're excited about that's uh, that some of the film and with each of these the filmmakers will be attending um, and talking about the process of making the film and and how you can bring that film those films to your communities um, because that's a nice way to sort of bring your community together um, and help you know help catalyze some some action in your in your area. Any other questions or, or comments? Uh, Anthony, earlier, before we started, you made a comment about, uh, about transportation issues. Is there anybody from outside the Indianapolis or Indiana area that needs information about transportation? If so, um, they, can, yeah. they can contact us and we, can, we may not be able to right. help, we can try. Okay. Yeah, so so that's Stu, right? Yes. So Stu is one of the uh, I think manages the website for Nike, and so Nike is uh, is doing a lot of work to help help host the conference this year, and so they're they're a nice local Indiana um, resource if if anybody has any Indiana specific questions. Any other questions or comments? I did want to mention that um, the next webinar we have on the calendar, we're going to be doing one 
Uh, you may have seen the uh, report that MPE released about a week ago, uh, focused on all the dark money that's pouring into elections around the country, backing candidates that are hostile to public education. And we, we don't have, the registration isn't quite ready yet, but it'll be, we'll be announcing it publicly soon. And I'll be sure to send uh, the registration to everybody who attended today um, so, so that you can sign up. Um, we'll have Carol Burris back again and Darcy Simaristi, who's, who helped uh, do the research and the graphics for the report. Carol, do you want to say anything more about that? No, other, other than um, you know, we're really excited about the report and um, we're not going to just go over the report because you can read the report yourself, but talk about how to actually do the research on some of these and then also some of the key concepts of what to look for, um, how they actually do the dark money piece of it uh, so that they're able to hide some of these donors and we'll highlight who some of the big players are. Um, that are going in races that we found both large and small. Um, I'm not quite sure what the solution to all of this is, but certainly more public awareness is, is very important. Well, I, think, I think we're seeing the, the electorate get more sophisticated in their understanding of um, as you know, as we saw in the recent election in New York, you know, with some of the, some of the, kind of turncoat politicians who have been taking this kind of money getting voted out of office. That's really what, what our goal is, is to kind of expose that and make them pay a price, just like they're paying a price when they get donations from the NRA uh, and ads bought by that type of operation. If they're getting donations from DFER, from Democrats for Education Reform, that should cost them a price at the ballot box. Any other uh, discussion? I hate to sound like the Indianapolis uh, Chamber of Commerce, but uh, I would like to do a pitch for those of you who've never been in Indianapolis. It, uh, for many people that do not live in the Midwest, it's uh, it's kind of flyover country, but Indianapolis is probably one of the finest places to have a conference because it's easy to get around. If the weather goes bad, you can do everything indoors. You can get from one place to another indoors without ever having to get cold or wet or carry, carry a coat. Our conference is all self-contained so you can uh, pretty much leave your stuff wherever, you know, in your room and go to the conferences and so on. And there are some amazing restaurants, breweries, uh, uh, craft beer places in downtown Indy, and all of them are walkable. And for those that are not walkable, uh, it's really easy to get an Uber or to rent a bike or rent a car. Uh, it's an, it, it is, it's a city that, it, that was, that has because of the Super Bowl back I, however many years ago, it's been pretty much designed to be conference friendly. And so I hope you will enjoy it. And if the weather is nice, it's amazing to do river walks uh, it, in the afternoon or evening. So that's my uh, pitch for the Chamber of Commerce. Great. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a great event and, and it's also very affordable city so i uh, hope everybody will will make it there and uh if there's nothing if there's no more comments then um we'll wrap it up and hope to talk to you again in a couple of weeks on october 6th and hope to meet you in person in indianapolis in uh in just just about a month's time thank you everybody for coming and thank you phyllis and Carol, for uh, for giving us your your time and your leadership. Thanks, Anthony. <clears throat> Anthony. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>